New Year's resolutions, the time-honored tradition of setting goals we know we're never going to accomplish. For many of us, they become more of a punchline than actual ritual, something so synonymous with failure that we don't even bother trying anymore. Which is a shame, right? I love the idea of starting the year off with a new perspective. Sure, time is arbitrary in a sense. There's no reason you couldn't start this new perspective April 16th or July 12th or whenever you need to change. But there's something very clean about the start of a new year. It's just cathartic, bringing a close to one year, one way of life, and starting a new year as a new person. Now, truth be told, I've never actually gotten through the month of January with a resolution, let alone a whole year, but there's just something so appealing about it nonetheless. It seems like a terrible opportunity to waste. And so I say, not this year. This year is going to be different. Different not in the sense that I'm just gonna try harder or find the effort or focus that's eluded me in the past, but in the sense that I'm gonna approach the whole concept differently. And I'm doing so, and thanks to CGP Grey. If you're unfamiliar, CGP Grey is a popular YouTube channel that uses stick figures to explain highly complex or misunderstood topics. Things like how traffic works, the difference between the UK, Great Britain, and England, how defining continents is more complicated than you were probably taught in school, and my personal favorite, the history of animal domestication. I know it sounds weird, but this two-part video series is extremely fascinating. Two years ago, he made a video about New Year's resolutions, why they fail, and what we can do differently. You should watch the video yourself, it's fantastic, but here are his basic points. The reason that most New Year's resolutions fail is not because of lack of will, he says, but because they're too specific and thus too rigid. Sometimes our situation changes. You say you want to go to the gym more, but then a pandemic hits. Sometimes your desires change. You say you want to eat healthier, but really it was just about feeling better. Sometimes the goal itself is just really difficult, and so early failures will debilitate our motivation. You say you want to quit smoking, but fall back into that habit after just a few weeks, so what's the point in trying? While specific, concrete goals can be helpful for some in achieving what they want, they can also leave most of us with a rigid, inflexible attitude that sets us up for failure. Those with great discipline might succeed, but most of us will become discouraged and give up quickly when things around us change. For this reason, he recommends setting a theme for the year, a broad category or direction that you want to go. Rather than losing weight, make it the year of health. Rather than reading a book a week, make it the year of education. The idea behind it is that you're not setting a tangible goal with clear successes and failures and endpoint to achieve, you're simply calibrating your compass. You're saying, I generally want to go that direction. And so when you're presented with new situations or new challenges, you continue to have a guide, something that can be adapted and still effective. It's a sort of flowchart for your actions, orienting you towards a direction and challenging you to incorporate the theme into every decision. Again, I want to recommend that you head over to the original video itself, as he will explain it much better than I do, and it's all his idea. Up to this point, I have added nothing to this and want to give him all the credit. That said, I do think that there is something to add to this, because I think this applies to more than just New Year's resolutions. It's a helpful tool for us Christians as we try to live as disciples of Christ. For many of us, our battle with sin is nothing more than a constant cycle of failed New Year's resolutions. We have a list of sins, specific concrete actions that we know are wrong, and so we set a goal to eliminate that sin, only often to become frustrated and complacent when we don't change. The reason for this, I believe, is because we look at our sins in isolation. We look at our decisions, all the things that we make, as if we have 100% freedom to choose between the good and the bad. I'm going to stop gossiping, stop looking at pornography, stop stealing from my employer, whatever it might be. I have the power in every situation to do what is right, so I just need to do it. It's only about willpower. But this is only partially true, and so it's only part of the problem. While we do have free will and we need discipline, that free will is influenced by a lot of sources. The attitudes that we bring to the situation, the positions we put ourselves in, the decisions we make throughout the other moments of our days, the way that our consciences are informed. We may want to stop gossiping, sure, but if we spend every moment we're alone thinking about other people with jealousy, it's going to be very difficult not to gossip when the situation presents itself. It's not about just that one sin or one situation, it's about all the other situations that informed that decision. And so I say, I think we can do better. 
If we want to end the sins in our lives, we have to drill a little deeper, look at what's behind our actions, and change the way we approach everything. Rather than focusing on the specific sin in isolation, I wonder if we might do better with a broad category, an approach that focuses on the attitudes and desires that influence every decision we make. Instead of, I'm going to stop gossiping, how about, this year I'm going to focus on charity? Instead of, I'm going to stop looking at pornography, how about this year I'm going to focus on chastity? Instead of, I'm going to stop stealing from my employer, how about this year I'm going to focus on honesty? When we change our focus in this way, we're not ignoring the sin, we're making sure that every decision we make serves as an opportunity for character development. It's not just about avoiding sin, it's about building virtue, of going through life with a guide that will slowly build habits within us. When faced with a decision, big or small, we let the theme be our guide. We let it orient us towards where we should go. Let it be the voice in the back of our head saying, which one is the more charitable choice, the more honest choice? Because really, charity doesn't just compel us to refrain from spreading rumors, it asks us to be nice to strangers, to avoid judgmental thoughts, to hold the door open for someone, to show patience for someone in need. Chastity doesn't just compel us to refrain from pornography, it asks us to approach people we're attracted to with dignity, to avert our eyes when necessary, to be careful with the movies and television we watch. Honesty doesn't just compel us not to steal, it asks us to present ourselves to the world as we really are, to speak up when things go wrong, to admit that we've made mistakes, and to tell people what they need to hear. In setting a broad theme for the year, there's no specific goal that we have, which means that there's no specific way that we can fail and give up. It's not so much about accomplishing something as it is about setting parameters for life, about choosing what to follow, determining the direction we want to go. It's flexible and adaptable, all-encompassing and holistic. The reason that this year is going to be different for me is because I'm going to focus my attention on relationships. Too often my life and ministry can be about getting stuff done, about doing things. I'm an extremely task-oriented person, which is how I'm able to do all that I can and I love that but it can also be impersonal at times. I can go long stretches of time without personally connecting with someone. I can be so busy that I rush from one thing to the next without really seeing the person in front of me. I can be so focused on finishing the task right now that I can lose touch with the people that really matter. I think of how many times over the years I've declined an invitation from someone who wanted to hang out because I had a lot of work to do. I think of how many people I've lost touch with over the years because really, I didn't just pick up the phone, send a text. I think of how many people I interact with on a daily basis without ever forming any sort of deep relationship. This year is going to be different. I'm putting relationships as my highest goal. I'm going to try to be more open to invitations and make sure that my schedule is flexible enough just to spend impromptu time with people, to be able to go and hang out without anything to do, without feeling like my work responsibilities will crash on me. What I'm invited to do may not exactly be what I want to do, may not be productive, but that doesn't really matter. I'm focusing on relationships. I'm going to make a conscious effort to maintain the relationships I already have with people who don't live in my immediate area and to go out of my way to reconnect with those I've lost touch with. It doesn't take much effort to reach out to people and say, hey, I was just thinking of you. I hope you're doing okay. Let's catch up sometime. Or this pandemic has been crazy. I feel so bad that we haven't talked in two years. What's new? It can be awkward, sure, but I'm focusing on relationships. Finally, I'm going to make myself more available to the people in my own area that I often don't make much effort to get to know. I think of all the teachers at the schools, the faculty members at the places I work. I see them most days, but I don't always take the time to get to know them, to form something intimate, to become more than just casual acquaintances. This life has to be about relationships. Now, is there a specific goal, a quota of 10 conversations a day, one phone call a week, one out of town visit a month? No. While these might be helpful, sure, they're not really the point. It's not about completing an objective, that's what most things get wrong in New Year's resolutions. It's about finding a guide, about picking a direction, and seeing how I'm changed along the way. Maybe I'll find in a few months that reaching out to old friends isn't all that fruitful, and I need to spend more time making new friends. Great, still the year of relationship. Maybe it's not about the quantity of invitations I accept, but about the quality of myself I give to the few I do accept. 
Awesome. Still moving, still making this value front and center. Imagine how different every facet of my life could be if I stick to this. If I let that voice in the back of my head remind me, it's about relationships. It could affect the way that I respond to comments online, which videos I make, the way I preach, how I spend my free time, what keeps me up at night, how I spend my money, how I pray, what breaks my heart, everything. If you haven't set a New Year's resolution this year, or maybe you've already given up, if you find yourself struggling with the same habitually sinful behavior, if you just want to jumpstart your life as a disciple, I want to recommend that you try a different approach. Look bigger. Look broader. Take a break from goals and spend some time with a value, a virtue, and let it lead you for a while. Let it influence not just your sinful behavior, but your entire life the mundane and ordinary things, the things that we often overlook each day. I tell you, this year is going to be different for me, and it can be different for you as well. Set a theme and let it guide everything you do.